Uh, I am Esther Banfi, the president of the EAA, and our secretary, Sally Foster, is also present, and she is also participating in uh, greeting you and participating in uh, any questions and answers that might occur uh, later on. First of all, I would like to uh, uh, enlighten somehow the occasion why we have come together today. And uh, the reason is that uh, about a month ago or six weeks ago, concerns reached the executive board about um, the behavior of the Hungarian government and its possible effects on uh, the 28th uh, annual meeting of the EAA in Budapest. So uh, on behalf of the communities of the LGBT plus uh, uh, people, uh, we took this, uh, these concerns very seriously and made several steps uh, to, uh, to, to, to amend this, to uh, help this. And one of the most important uh, steps is from the Hatir Society, which is the largest and most important uh, civilian organization in Hungary for uh, uh, LGBTQ plus rights. Uh, hi, Robert, and hi, Biserka Gaidarska. Biserka was kind enough to take over uh, the moderation today. She is co chairing the EAA community for uh, archaeology and gender. Biserka, thank you very much. Robert, uh, thank you very much for uh, attending. I think we probably have lost Esther again. Oh, we lost her again. Oh, we are so sorry for that. Okay. Um, right. Okay. Maybe uh, I would really very like her to um, kind of brief you where we were and this is how we got where we are at the moment. And this is our was our plan before we actually moved to Robert. So. Um, if you can bear with us for a minute and forgive us for these technical issues, and I will ask Esther to rejoin us again so she can make that presentation. If not, uh, Sally, do you think you can uh, step in if she can't rejoin us? No, I think I'm here. Am I here? Yes, you are. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I wasn't expecting to do this. So uh, everybody, yeah, forgive me and apologies once more for the uh, technical problems that, that Esther's having. So, um, yeah, so th this, this slide essentially summarises the actions that the EAA Executive Board has taken since um, um, the concerns were raised that Esther just talked about. So uh, we, already, we already have an EAA safe space policy but we have updated that, um, taking into account um, sort of more local circumstances in Budapest, and there's a there's a link to those that guidelines there. We also have an EAA appeal and anti-harassment committee. Again, this is a sort of standing committee that we have, but we've also looked at how we will um, work that in the kind of local circumstances of Budapest. We've got the existing EAA statement on archaeology and gender that was issued in 2020 and approved in April 21 um, by our members. Uh, and of course, that underpins everything that we do in relation to um, archaeology and gender. Um, we've also got the mission statement of the host institution um, that uh, I think I'm correct in saying, um, and Sylvie can correct me if I've got this wrong, was updated uh, in, in, in the course of the last month. My apologies if I've got that, got that bit wrong. Um, and we've also got the uh, statement, the recent statement that was produced by the uh, Association of Hungarian Archaeologists. So these are all places where we've provided um, supporting information um, about that we, we hope addresses the concerns of the LGBTQI and safety at the Budapest conference and which obviously we can uh, address any queries that relate to as we go through today's meeting. If I missed anything there, Berserker or Sylvie, please, please do correct me or, or add to that. Thank you very much, Sally. Uh, I think probably now we can proceed with some uh, technicalities. Probably you have heard several times uh, a lady with American accent saying this is, has been recorded. Uh, but we just to make sure that you know that uh, this is recorded and we do intend to put it as widely as possible, uh, available as widely as possible um, on the AIR website and, and, and on the YouTube channel. 
Uh, at the moment, uh, only uh, the um, panelists can see the people who are attending. You're not visible to each other. Whoever is in the audience is not visible to each other and it is entirely anonymous. So you don't know who is uh, listening next to you. However, if you want to speak, then obviously everybody will see you exactly as it happened with Sally. But if you want to raise a question, then you can uh, either raise your hand or um, write it in the chat, not in the chat, in the Q&A uh, um, uh, uh, button uh, that is available on Zoom. Uh, also, obviously, you know that you can uh, communicate between yourselves as we, as we were trying to do now without in, in the light of this, uh, in, in this uh, technical issues. And so it is nearly up to you how you want to raise your questions, whether you want to remain anonymous or you want everybody to see and hear what you want to say. Uh, all formats are available and it is, uh, we are there to help you and assist you with whatever one you want. Uh, but basically, you are anonymous, uh, uh, the people in the audience. Uh, now, it uh, great, uh, takes me a great pleasure to uh, uh, introduce Robert Bujaki from the Hatter Society, uh, who uh, agreed to um, give us a short presentation about what the society does and to reassure you, us and uh, reassure that uh, our concerns to kind of um, uh, 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 make our uh, experience of Budapest as safe as possible. So Robert, please. Hey, uh, thank you, Bisarka. Um, and thank you for the EAA to um, invite Hatter Society. Uh, we see that a lot of effort is going into, into uh, the safety of the members of the uh, EAA during your uh, conference next year uh, here in Budapest. So just a few words um, about Hatter Society. Uh, um, so as Bisaka mentioned, my name is Robert Bujaki and I work for uh, uh, a civil society organization called Hatter Society, uh, founded in 1995. Uh, this is currently the um, oldest and largest LGBTQIA plus civil society organization here uh, in Budapest. Uh, personally, I work for the uh, legal program of Hatter Society, uh, but as you can see here on your screen as well, we are much more than a legal program and the legal aid. Uh, we provide information, and we have an information and a concealing hotline to support with any kind of information and help uh, to the uh, LGBTQIA plus community. We also have uh, an in-person counseling for people to who might need some kind of uh, personal guidance or personal help. We have a legal aid. Basically, we provide uh, representation and concealing in every uh, issues, every cases where the sexual orientation or gender identity might have any uh, significance. We also have an HIV AIDS prevention program. We uh, have an archive and library as well. Um, we, conduct researches and uh, provide trainings uh, for professionals. Uh, we do advocacy and also we frequently organize community and cultural events. So as you can see here, we have a lot of uh, activities and programs. Um, so today I'm, I'm just going to uh, share, you some info, uh, share some information with you about um, the um, community here in Hungary and the current situation. Uh, the, and um, and also some kind of uh, information that what kind of rights uh, do you have while you are staying here in Budapest and uh, also some uh, I'll try to uh, give you some um, tips as well and, and useful information. So Hungary's population is approximately 10 million people and the, um, the LGBTQIA communities number is approximately 1.5% of the whole population. This number is from 2016. We assume that it, it, it's much higher, but this is a so-called official uh, number. So I put that uh, here. Homosexuality is legal since the 1960s in Hungary. And uh, just to uh, 
uh, Latin, you just to put it into context, what kind of rights the, um, the community has. Uh, we have no same-sex marriage here, but we have the registered partnership uh, for same-sex couples. It's only uh, possible for same-sex couples only. Um, it has got some marriage-like uh, rights, but unfortunately, it's, it's not the same as, as a marriage. Um, the partners cannot take each other's name, for example, like married couples can also joint adoption is not possible, like married couples can uh, do also adoption for same-sex couples or single um, person, single people, single person is, 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 is generally seems uh, impossible uh, right now here. Uh, legal gender recognition is banned since uh, 2020. It was possible for many, many years. Um, then the uh, procedures have been uh, suspended. Then the, unfortunately, it's, it's, it's not possible since 2020. Um, it does not mean that being transgender is banned. So uh, people can still uh, be transgender. They can come out as transgender. They might even have uh, uh, hormonal treatment. They might even have medical certificates. They might even have uh, gender reassignment surgeries. But unfortunately, the uh, administrative pr procedure behind that it's, it is not possible. So obviously, basically, uh, they they cannot uh, change their sex and name in their in their official document and in the registry. So this is this is what is banned. Uh, a simple existence of the transgender people is not banned. So, so there are transgender people here in Hungary as well. Um, also, the reason I think why we are here, uh, this is the new law, uh, that so-called propaganda law that is in force, uh, came into force uh, this July. Uh, it, it aims to ban all homosexual and transsexual propaganda. Um, this has been widely reported during the summer uh, in the international press, so we might have uh, heard about it. Um, so actually, it's it's the the so-called propaganda law, as as we we call it, is trying to ban all products, advertising, and media content featuring gay or transgender people for people under the age of eighteen, and this is the key uh, of this uh, of this of this law. Um, furthermore, the law bans, to, bans the appearance of LGBTQI people in public service advertisement as well as any school program that promotes homosexuality, being transgender, and uh, transitioning. So as I, as I mentioned before, the key is that uh, the law only applies to the accessibility of the LGBTQIA plus content to people under the age of 18. So it's, it's not a general ban. On the uh, on the whole community for for uh, homosexuals or transgender people, um, actually it is referred to by the government as a child protective measure, um, but there are a lot of issues with this is with this uh, law. It's in our opinion, it's not a legislative measure. It's just a political tool. Um, with no clear definitions, no clear sanctions uh, behind the actions. So if we have a look at it, we still don't know what promoting homosexuality means. And it was it was never said exactly what, what this means. So there are there are no clear definitions. And as I as I said before, it's really important that it is it is even if it's really extensive, it's not a general ban. Um, uh, on, of the of the LGBTQI community or contents, so adults, so people above eighteen, still can discuss topics like that. Still can have their programs, events, uh, so on. As you will see, I will talk about that uh, later. But what they are trying to ban, and the government trying to ban, is the accessibility for people under under the age of eighteen of these kind of uh, content. Also the Political discourse creates a more and more hostile environment. In recent years, I just gave you a few harsh examples from the uh, recent years. Uh, the Speaker of the Parliament likened same sex couples raising uh, children to pedophiles. Also, uh, Prime Minister Viktor Orban said homosexuals should keep their hands off of children. 
Um, the deputy prime minister a few months ago said that homosexual is a sin, but you have to know that this is only the, the political discourse and the political tools that um, we, we have here. Um, the effects obviously has, obviously the, uh, the political discourse and the propaganda law and other so-called legislative measures have their effects um, in, our, in the daily life of the community because these can be considered as some kind of an, uh, an authorization to, to commit hate crimes or use hate speech or, or, or just be the ground of the discrimination. Um, also, we experienced a slight, slight incline in hate crimes and hate speech reported to our organization. But in the last few months, the, um, the so-called LGBTQIA plus topic is so popular here in Hungary. And, um, and this, this can be the reason that um, we, we saw this, this slight uh, incline in uh, issues reported to us. But these were the um, these were the bad news. Um, I obviously have some good news for you as well. Uh, so despite all the negative campaign, uh, social acceptance of the uh, of the LGBTQIA plus people at a historic peak in Hungary right now. Uh, so this is, is based on a research by Amnesty International Hungary and our organization Hacker Society conducted in July 2021. So after uh, the um, that, that propaganda law came into force. Um, as you can see here on the numbers, the society is, is, is really supportive. 73% of people reject the government's false claim that gay and lesbian people abuse or harm children. Marriage equality is supported by 59%. By 69% of uh, the respondents say that uh, same-sex couple can also be good friends. And the 74.5 percent believe that transgender people should be able to change their gender. So this, this, this really, these numbers show that it's, it's obviously it's only the, um, the political discourse and political tools that against LGBTQI uh, community here. Um, also, uh, just to show you that uh, the the recent legislative measures are not a general ban and not a ban. Uh, at all. Uh, we recently had the 26th Budapest Pride in July 2021. So once again, after the, um, the transphobic and homophobic law came into force, uh, more than 30,000 people appeared. This is a huge number here um, in terms of uh, our Budapest Pride uh, in Hungary and no major incidents reported during or after the Pride Month. So it's not just the mar March, but the whole month with all of these events and programs uh, we had during the summer. Um, during the March, there was a small number of demonstrators not threatening at all and no violent incidents reported. Um, we are aware that some people were going with rainbow flags to, to the Pride March and someone threw a beer can at them, but we, we haven't had any, any violent issues where someone got hurt reported. Also, once again, in September uh, 2021, um, we had our first Pride March outside of Budapest. So, so this is again after the um, after the uh, transphobic and homophobic uh, law uh, came into force uh, months later. So, so as, this is a confirmation that that um, simple existence or the sheer existence of of, of the uh, LGBTQIA plus people is not banned. So we can still see uh, people. Um, same-sex couples holding hands on the street, and 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 there are no no major uh, incidents issues uh, reported. So in in this context, we we think that Budapest is is still a safe uh, city. Um, so um, as 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 I show show you, um, actually it's it's only the uh, the political uh, tools that trying to trying to um, uh, trying to to tell you that it's 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 different um, so 
this is what I was wanted to uh, say about the um, current situation that we might have. I just want to um, give you some overview about your rights during your stay, um, um, during your visit here in Budapest. So I'm going to talk to you about discrimination and hate crimes, um, just in case, uh, hopefully you won't have to use this information, but just to make sure that you, you know about this. Um, so um, the um, discrimination based on sexual orientation uh, or gender identity and many other characteristics like dis disability, state of health, age, race, sex, and so on is banned. So the, it, it's guaranteed in an act since 2003. Um, this means that public bodies, uh, authorities, um, armed forces, law enforcement bodies, or educational institutes like uh, schools, universities, or, or museums as well, even the employers um, uh, obliged to comply with the principle of equal treatment. And in your case, the, uh, why is it important in your case? Because um, it is also applicable to you, even if you might not uh, have any um, thing to do with public bodies or auto authorities while you are staying here uh, in, in Hungary. Um, also the service providers like hotels and those who sell goods at their premises open to customers, simply shops have to comply. And uh, it does not apply only to, to Hungarian citizens, but also for uh, foreign citizens for you, in this case, who, who visit our country. So, it means that um, a hotel won't, uh, so, so, so a hotel can't uh, uh, refuse any services or, or uh, a restaurant uh, cannot refuse to serve you, cannot reject you just because you're part of the uh, LGBTQIA plus community. Um, what to do in this case? Because actually these cases won't require immediate intervention. Uh, you should just report it to to uh, to, to Hatfish Society, to our organization. We will be able to to handle this case. Um, even if you want, you don't want to be involved in any kind of uh, legal procedure after that. We are happy to have only a report that what happened with you when uh, ha when this happened. In just just to just to have a record of, of these kind of, of issues. Um, a possible outcome can be that uh, a, a procedure conducted by the Office of the Commissioner, Commissioner for uh, Fundamental Rights, and they can even impose a fine uh, here. So it's not it's not a, a criminal procedure, it's it's an administrative procedure, but there are some sanctions for. For example, in this case, in your case, a hotel or restaurant to, to breach uh, this uh, law. Um, hate crimes, uh, these are more serious and more violent issues. Uh, if you are not familiar with the term hate crimes, so basically these are offenses committed with a biased motive. So these uh, include offenses against person and Property as well, so it's really important not just person but property as well, where the victim premises or target of the offense are selected because of their real or perceived connection, attachment, affiliation, support, or membership to the group based upon a characteristic common to its members, such, such as gender identity, sexual orientation, or other factor. Really simple uh, example um, same sex couples. Um, being um, uh, attacked on a street because they are holding hands. So these are the uh, criminal offenses when uh, being a group of a, a part of a community, uh, part of a group has any uh, kind of significance. The criminal code prohibits uh, hate crimes based on sexual orientation or gender identity. And as these are uh, more serious issues and usually violent issues, um, if you feel threatened, uh, if you think you're in danger, um, you should just uh, 
call the police. So if you need immediate help, you should call the police or even the, the ambulance if someone got hurt. Uh, the emergency phone number uh, is uh, 112, like uh, in every country here in the uh, European Union. Um, also, if um, something like this happened to you, you should report it to Healthcare Society. We will be able to help you as well. Uh, really important that we won't be able to uh, provide immediate uh, help to you because we do not have any kind of hotline. We only have a legal aid, uh, which provides consultation and email. Um, so, so you can report it uh, to us after uh, this happened. We will be able to help you um, with any kind of legal procedure after that. Also, if you happen to have any legal procedure once again it is just a report that we are we are happy to uh, to have that report as well uh, the possible outcome can be a criminal procedure procedure with uh, severe sanctions also imprisonment so so uh, the authorities and the police take this really serious um actually the this is the, these are crimes so followed by a criminal procedure uh, the police also has their own um, investigation uh, protocol for these kind of uh, crimes, so 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 they take this really seriously. Um, and just some useful information: you can see the uh, website of our um, uh, of, of Hatter Society here on your screen. We have uh, um, a website in in English. Uh, we frequently some have some uh, news uploaded in English as well. So you, you, have, you will have uh, some uh, information about the community if you visit our website. Uh, this is the uh, email address of our uh, legal aid. You can write uh, your uh, letters to us in English, obviously. Uh, all of us speak English, so we will be able to assist you. And I just put here some um, uh, also, some useful information here. Um, the general emergency service phone number, as I mentioned before, you should dial 111 if you are in, in trouble and need immediate help of the police, ambulance, or fire brigade. Uh, they speak Hungarian, English, and German, so you don't have to worry about not speaking Hungarian. Um, they will be able to, to assist you if, if, if you speak English uh, or German. So um, actually, these were the information that I was thinking that you, you need to know uh, about the current situation and might be helpful uh, while you are staying here. So all in all, as I said before, Budapest can be considered a safe a city, LGBTQIA wise. Uh, so um, I think that you don't have to worry about that, any kind of incidents during your uh, stay, even if something happens, uh, your organization, our organization, and, and all the audio authorities are here to help uh, you. And um, um, you are, you are, you are, you are welcome and, and hope you will have uh, a good, good conference next year. And, uh, and, and thank you for your attention for this presentation. Um, we also, received a question in advance that I'm going to answer. Uh, so the question was that could Hungarian individuals get into trouble supporting gender equality, including LGBTQIA plus questions, themes uh, in a conference? So, so actually, uh, no. So this is the simple question, the simple answer that uh, not just Hungarian individuals, but any individuals won't get into any trouble by supporting gender equality and the LGBTQIA topics. Um, the only thing uh, that uh, has to be taken into consideration in this case, if, if this is an open uh, event, uh, that are you discussing any uh, LGBTQI related topic during these, um, this conference and if there are people under the age, age of 18. So there might be any sanctions, there might be any conse consequences when there are people under the age of 18. 
otherwise known. There, it, it, it's completely safe to discuss uh, this topic, even if it's the main topic uh, of the event. Uh, then, then it, then it's completely safe. Uh, you should just take care that um, if there are people under the age of eighteen, that it might have any sanctions. But as I said before, uh, we still don't know what the what the exact sanctions can be of of this ban. Um, but just to answer the question once again, it's it's completely safe, and um, and no one got, no one will get into get into any trouble. Also, we usually we say that um, people and organizers uh, can be a little bit brave uh, in this case, as there are no sanctions uh, and and we don't know what is, is, is what will might happen. And also, if there's anything happens and there are any sanctions, uh, our uh, organization after society is more than happy to help uh, once again. Uh, so uh, yes, so this was the uh, only question that we received in advance. Um, so uh, we'll just give it back to you to be Sarka and to see if we have any, any other questions. Thank you. Robert, thank you so, so much for this extremely uh, informative presentation. It is really very reassuring that there is a difference between a political discourse and social reality. And it is good to hear it from somebody who is actually on the ground. And it's good to hear that uh, um, discrimination is illegal, basically. So these are all reassuring, uh, uh, reassuring, uh, reassuring information. And of course, you have been that your presentation was very useful in terms of practical uh, advice and practical issues. Should we ever need to use any of that? So that has been really very helpful. So uh, I really hope that that indeed that will um, uh, satisfy uh, concerned members of the EAA uh, that uh, for their safety and uh, well-being. Uh, now. We haven't received any questions thus far in the QAA or in the chat. I'll, let's give it a little bit more um, time because it takes time for people to type. So um, I don't see anybody raising their hand wanting to ask a question. So I suggest we wait for a little bit till a possible question appears, and um, if not, um, uh, are we having Esther with us eventually if she wants to say, oh, somebody is having a question? Yes, <laughs> right, Esther. It, it's me, yes. <laughs> um, sorry, uh, I was dropped out uh, because my Firefox just crashed, but as a simple uh, listener, I was able to join. So uh, instead of posing a new question, I would like to uh, uh, extend uh, the, the, the answer Robert gave to the last question, saying that actually the statement by uh, the Hungarian Association of Archaeologists uh, was targeting exactly this issue. They just didn't want to make it explicit, saying that if you attend a, a gender uh, LGBTQIA plus uh, theme in the, uh, the EAA annual meeting, you will be not uh, uh, punished afterwards or having any consequences of that. Uh, up to saying that everything else is involved, saying that they are rejoicing, they are encouraging uh, their members to uh, participate in this. So this is just confirming what Robert uh, 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 said a minute ago. Uh, there is no problem uh, for anyone, Hungarian or people from abroad, attending gender sensitive themes or sessions uh, in the next annual meeting in Budapest. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Esther. Oh, well, I was very much hoping that there will be no, I mean, you know, since I intend to attend every single one of them. And, and uh, so, yes, that's very reassuring again to hear. Um, again, a no hand and no question. Um, Esther, do you want to make a, a closing comment, uh, commentary since you're cut off in the beginning? Or, I mean, again, I'm very happy with how, uh, with the information provided. And I'm really help, uh, thankful for Robert for doing so. 
And yes, please, Esther. Well, uh, what, what else could I say in the end, uh, except uh, say, saying a, a huge thank you on Robert, Robert Bujaki on behalf of the Heart Tears Society, also to be circa to moderate us, and also anyone who raised concerns to begin with, who might find a satisfaction uh, by our, uh, our large scale of uh, responses, uh, being this one perhaps the most important one uh, among all uh, the, uh, uh, the the feedbacks or the reactions we try to give. Uh, I think uh, if there had been any more concerns that that would be that would involve some more questions. So the mere fact that uh, today there are no questions uh, might be a, a positive sign of of, of people uh, getting relaxed, uh, getting the necessary information uh, uh, on, on behalf of the executive board and on behalf of the Heart Care Society. Nevertheless, uh, please, anyone listening this, since this will be recorded and put on YouTube uh, later on, if you uh, happen to have any doubts later on, don't hesitate to contact us again. We will do our best. And maybe I can say that also on behalf of Robert and the Hathir Society, that we'll be very uh, keen and happy to help further anything, uh, doing anything that we can so that you feel safe in the Budapest annual meeting of the European Association of Archaeologists. Thank you very much to attend here. Thank you very much for listening, for putting questions. And a huge thank you to Robert and Biserka, of course. I would like to join, uh, join Esther, so thank you very much. And again, reiterate, if you have any further questions, don't hesitate to get in touch, either with uh, the Hatter Society, with us, with Age, or with uh, the executive board. Please uh, make yourself heard if, if, you, if you have a question. Thank you very much once again. And, uh, I still don't see any questions, so probably at this point we can say thank you to everybody for participating and goodbye.